Hey there! Have you ever taken a gorgeous photo outside, but you couldn't quite capture those dreamy light beams? Ugh, that's the worst. Well, no worries. Today, we're going to add beams of light into this forest photo, or you can follow along with any of your photos. Whether you want to make light rays shining through a forest, or coming through a window, or even shooting down from the heavens, the technique is the same. Let's get started. Right, for this tutorial, we'll be using this beautiful forest photo, which you can download in the video description. Now to get started, we are actually going to be using the highlights in this photo to create our light beam effect. And to do that, we first need to select the highlights. So go to the top of the screen to select, tonal range, select highlights. Nice! With our highlight selected, we can actually duplicate this selection onto a new layer. So press Command or Control J to do that. And now we can press Command or Control D to deselect. With our highlights on their own layer, we're ready to blur them to create the light beam effect. So I'm going to go to the top of the screen to Filters, Blur, and this is the blur we're using today, Zoom Blur. All right. It doesn't look like anything's happening yet, but that's because we need to adjust the radius down in the dialog box. So I'm going to bring this radius up quite a ways to create our zoom blur effect. And that's looking pretty good, but I think I want it to go even higher. And right now it doesn't look like we can do that. But in Affinity Photo, you can click in the box and type in whatever number you want, and it will create that value for the radius. So I'm going to type in 700 and then press enter. Nice, that's looking pretty good to me. Now we want to change the source of our zoom blur and we want it to be where the source of light is in this photo. And it's a little hard to tell, so you can place this wherever you think looks best by clicking somewhere on the photo. You can even click off the screen if you think that looks best. And for this photo, this example, I'm going to click right about here, but you can do it wherever you want. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back down to the dialog box and press apply. Right now, our light beams are looking pretty soft, faint. Yeah, they're looking pretty faint. <laughs> That's the right word. So we're going to duplicate their layer to make them stand out a little more, and that'll make it easier when we're working with them. So with our light beam layer selected, go ahead and press Command or Control J a few times to duplicate our layer. All right, that looks good. I have about eight layers here if you're following along with me. <laughs> so now we want to select all of these light beam layers and put them into a group. So to do that, make sure your top layer is selected, go down to the bottom light beam layer, and while holding down Shift, Go ahead and click. And now we have all of them selected. And now you can press Command or Control G to group them. Perfect. To make it a little easier to work with, I'm going to rasterize this layer to make it so it's all on the same layer. So to do that, go ahead and right click on the group and then go down and press rasterize. All right, these light beams are looking pretty good. And right now we're going to just do a few tweaks to add a little bit more realism. So I'm going to come to the blend modes and change it from normal to screen. With the blend mode set to screen, it's making sure that none of the photo is getting darkened by our light rays. So this just makes everything a bit brighter, how it would be in real life. So right now we're going to also change the blend ranges. So go ahead and press on the gear icon right here. And we're going to bring the far right circle halfway down. By bringing the circle down, we're making it so that the highlights in the photo aren't getting too bright. And so by doing this, we're avoiding it looking blown out in the photo. So now we want to go ahead and soften these light ray lines a little bit because in reality, the light rays wouldn't be so sharp looking all the way down. They would start to become more diffused and blurred toward the bottom. 
So to do this, we're going to go to the Live Filters icon, and then we're going to apply a Gaussian Blur filter. With this Gaussian Blur filter, we can bring up the radius to whatever we think looks good for softness. And I think I'm going to bring mine around 4 pixels. This Gaussian Blur filter is looking pretty nice, but we don't want all of our light rays to be blurred. We just want it to be blurred toward the bottom. So to solve this, we're going to apply a gradient mask. So make sure your Gaussian Blur filter layer is selected in the Layers panel. And then we're going to click on the Gradient tool. Now we just need to click and drag. And we have our gradient. Wherever the gradient is white is where we're going to have the Gaussian Blur layer revealed. And so at the top, this gray color stop, we're going to change to black. So go to your colors and make sure it's black. Where the color stop is black, that just means our Gaussian Blur filter is not being applied. So if we zoom in here, you can see what a difference it's made. Without the Gaussian Blur filter, the lines were pretty sharp for our light rays, but now they're nice and soft. Our light beams are looking great right now, but we want to make this even more realistic. So light beams shining through a forest like this kind of reminds me of when you're camping and you wake up in the morning and you have the light shining through the trees, but it's also a little bit foggy, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and add some fog to this image. So to do that, we first need to apply a curves adjustment. So you can do that by coming down to the adjustments icon and then going to curves. So with our curves adjustment, we're gonna take the far left node and we're gonna bring it up to about the halfway point. So obviously this doesn't look super good right now. We can't really see our picture anymore. So we're going to apply another gradient mask to make it so this foggy part is just toward the bottom of the photo. So we still have our gradient tool selected. So we can go ahead and click and drag to mask out this effect. Make sure your top circle is selected, and then you can change its color to black to conceal the curves adjustment. And now you can go ahead and move this around however you think looks good. Nice. So now that we have the hazy look of the fog, we're also going to add a little bit of texture to this to make it look even more like fog. So to do this, we're going to add a new pixel layer and then we're going to add a Perlin noise filter. So go back to the top of the screen to filters, noise, and Perlin noise. At this point, your colors might look a little strange. So just make sure in the color panel that your colors are set to black and white. You can arrange these sliders however you think looks good. I think the default looks pretty good for this photo. So I'll go ahead and press apply. Now we're going to change the blend mode so we can actually see the forest again. <laughs> it's kind of hidden right now. So change it from normal to overlay. And if you wanted to, you could also apply another gradient mask to take this texturing down, but I like how this is looking, so I'm gonna leave it how it is. So as some finishing touches, we're going to do a little bit to enhance the colors. So we're going to first apply a levels adjustment. To do this, you could go to the adjustment icon, or you could press Command or Control L. Ah, we love a good shortcut. All right, so go ahead and bring the black level up to 5%. And this just lets the trees come out of the fog a little bit more. And then we're going to go to our red channel, and we're going to bring the black level up to 5% again to add a little bit of cyan to the shadows. Awesome. With the levels adjustment applied, the only thing left to do is adjust the opacity of some of the layers. So if any of these layers are looking a little too intense for you, you can just click on the layer and lower the opacity. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. All right, to see a before and after, we're gonna go ahead and select all of our layers. Here's the before. 
get that out of the way. <laughs> here's the before and here's our after. The light rays we added to this photo really helped add a little something something and I think it looks great. But you might want to enhance the colors in this photo a little more. If you want to do that, go ahead and check out our color pop tutorial. This tutorial is really easy to do and can really help your photos out. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.